to all of you who dialed in, thank you so much for dialing in and welcome to this uh, Vermilion Talent webinar series. We are very, very excited uh, for tonight's webinar series. It's all about personal brands and um, we have many, many listeners today and that shows us, shows us actually that personal brand is really a topic that interests. Um, so, well, let's get started. Um, if we can go to the next slide. I just want to do a couple of um, uh, household things, as I call it. <laughs> Again, welcome. Great you're here. And uh, we would love to, uh, to make sure that you hear everything that, um, that we're saying. Uh, uh, hear all the great tips and tricks that Julie will share with us today, tonight. So make sure you turn up your volume and you can hear us loud and clearly. Um, again, we are very pleased that you all joined us. We know you're all very, very busy and uh, you should be proud of yourself that you um, were able to, to join us tonight and enjoy. Um, we, uh, so again, uh, make sure that your volume is turned up. Uh, make also sure that uh, you turn off your phones, your social media, really use this uh, time a little bit as, uh, as me time. Um, again, you, you uh, were able to find the time to, uh, to join us and uh, we have a lot of interesting um, uh, topics to share with you. Um, so grab a cup of tea. I just did uh, actually as well myself <laughs> some tension tamer uh, tea I have in my hands right now. And um, yeah, I'm just again, I'm very, very excited for tonight's uh, webinar. Also, don't be shy. We want this to be an interactive uh, uh, webinar. We have uh, enough time at the end of the webinar to answer any questions that you may have. So there's this Q&A button that you can use. Uh, we have uh, Anju joining us in the, in the background. Uh, she will collect all the questions that you raise um, and we will uh, use uh, or yeah we will we will have enough time to again at the end of the webinar to answer these questions if not we will even answer them by email uh, um, at the end or afterwards also we have a chat box uh, during the webinar you will see that Anju will share some information uh, that is interesting to um, uh, to look up maybe some websites or uh, uh, well just look at the chat uh, box as well I think there's one element in this webinar that's interesting to hear uh, or that that is good for you to know that we will ask some volunteers even to um, put on the volume and uh, get some live tips and tricks from Julie during the webinar uh, Anju will prompt you in the chat box uh, when this uh, when you can raise your hand to be the volunteer so let's get started. Uh, what we want to start with is um, to talk a little bit or just show you a little bit about what from who Vermillion is. Uh, I know we have also a lot of newbies uh, to, tonight that uh, joined us. Again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, just a quick, quick note about who we are. Um, Vermillion Talent is a social in enterprise and we brought it actually to life. Uh, based on our own experiences. So Anju is again in the background, I'm here. Uh, we both have the experience of re-entering the workforce after career break. Um, and what we uh, offer is actually the hub for career re-entry. So we help to connect you as a career returnee or as somebody who's looking for the, the next opportunity in, in, in your chapter in your career. Um, and we can help you with connecting you with coaches, we can help you connecting you with companies, and we can help you with any partner, uh, partners that we uh, work with to make sure that you find that right opportunity um, in the next chapter of your career. Um, so we bring it all together and um, uh, we wanted to share a little bit with you uh, also who, who our two talent community, who our members are at this moment in time. So we have uh, a member base of, of a lot of very, very talented and educated uh, professionals who, are, uh, who went out, uh, to, uh, out of the workforce and are now ready to get back in. As you can see, they represent a broad range of industries and functions and have a lot of experience. And that's actually what the companies that we talk to are very interested in as well. And they think, uh, and we know that you are a very, very talented uh, talent when they they need you actually <laughs> that's what they tell us so we try to make that connection as well um, and what we do um, 
on, on the professional side is really to share you content, resources, anything that we can do to help you along the way to make that next step in your career. And this webinar of tonight is one of the elements that, um, that we would like to share with you. Um, so I think we're there. We're ready to do some introductions. Um, so Anju and I uh, both co-founded for Million Talents. Uh, again, Anju is in the background. She uh, has an experience of getting back in the workforce uh, after a career break of around five years to take care of her two adorable sons. <laughs> uh, she uh, is a management consultant. She stopped working uh, uh, when she was a management consultant and then she came back after five years as a management consultant. And so she also saw uh, how, how difficult it is. And she, she knows um, she's really, I mean, I call her always the career reentry guru because she has a lot of experience in what to do, what to do and what to not do. Um, my background is also in management consulting and I uh, moved uh, from the Netherlands to the US a couple of years ago. And I have that experience of re-entering. So it's more re-entering after a relocation, which has a little bit of a different perspective. But again, also the experience that I have um, and the perspectives that I bring in, uh, uh, we share that with our community, with, with the women, the, the professionals in our community every day. And uh, we're very pleased to help. Um, uh, it's really our mission, actually, to empower professionals to, to get to that next opportunity. Um, and then, of course, I mean, Julie, we have Julie uh, joining us tonight. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. <clears throat> And we're very excited to have you uh, on this webinar and uh, we're able to, to catch you. I know you have a very, very busy agenda. We know we have, you have actually tomorrow a big conference going on. So we're, again, very pleased that you were able to, to take the time to uh, share your knowledge with our community. Um, just a little bit about Julie uh, for people who don't know her. Uh, she's the author of the best-selling book, Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. Um, she's the founder and CEO of Brandtwist. And uh, Brandtwist is a branding consultancy and brand school online. Um, uh, she has uh, branding programs for entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and small businesses, and now also starts to uh, uh, have branding programs for individuals. Um, prior to starting her own company, Julie honed her branding chops as the VP of Brand for Richard Branson's Virgin Company and at Interbrand and Grey, Grey Global. Uh, she has been an adjunct professor, professor of marketing at both Cornell and Columbia. And you have a lot of speaking arrangements at corporates and personal branding um, in top business media, so, uh, such as Entrepreneur Magazine and C CNN. Um, and, and we will hear a little bit more about your own life during this webinar as well, but it's, uh, there were, has been filled with magical twists, as you call it. Um, and it has taken you from New York to Paris and back again. Um, so yeah, we will hear more about your, uh, about your experiences, uh, during this webinar, webinar, but again, welcome. And thank you so much for, for being here tonight. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I love the way you say my name also. <laughs> oh, not good. <laughs> no, no, it's it, sounds very, it sounds very French and very exotic. I, I like to hear it from you. Cotino, yeah. That's, I think it is, it is the French way, right? Julie Cotino. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. So before we uh, start to interview, so to say, Julie, we um, uh, would like to know a little bit more about our uh, attendees or our our listeners. Uh, so we would like to start with a quick poll uh, for those of you who have joined us before during webinars, you probably know this question already, uh, but it's just good for us to know um, uh, yeah, who, who's out there, who are listening, and uh, we can, uh, that way we, we are sure that we share the right information and the most relevant information for, for our listeners. So if you could, the poll is now shared, if you could please um, uh, answer the question on your screen so we can, uh, we can um, share the results in a bit and, uh, and we will go from there. Julie, did you also get a good cup of tea for tonight? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lots of water. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I think we are sharing the results right now. 
So uh, it's actually a mixed group of people, which is great. So um, well, most of the people say um, I'm currently working, but looking for a change. So that's interesting for us to hear as well. And it's actually, uh, it shows us. So we, we do sometimes webinars during the day and sometimes at night. And it makes sense, right? That uh, if you're working, that you're happy probably that we do this webinar at night. Uh, so you have some time to, to listen tonight. Um, and it's, um, it's interesting to, to know, Julie, I think, for the rest of the, uh, the, the presentation that um, there are uh, definitely some, some already working uh, professionals on, uh, but also um, thinking of starting my own business and some unemployed um, uh, returnees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's the year of okay. possibility. I think it's a, it's a new year and we're all looking... For new opportunity which is fantastic yeah exactly i heard 2018 will be the the year for uh starting new opportunities <laughs> so let's um let's let's see uh if we can close the share the poll results so we can start with the presentation okay great so, Julie, uh, we would like to start, I mean, we're talking about personal brands. Uh, of course, uh, when we marketed the, this webinar, we we're saying, okay, it's, it's about personal brand. But what is actually, what is it? What's in your view, the definition of personal brand? Yeah, I get this question a lot. People say, you know, am I really a brand? And, and we are. Each of us is a brand. And personal branding is really a way for, for you to stand out and to take control of your own image uh, and to find and express in my language what I call your personal twist, what's, what's unique and different about you, uh, particularly if you're looking for a new job or you're getting back into the job market or you're trying to get funding for a business. The thing about personal branding is it's not the same as just your natural personality. You know, it's not um, just who you are. It's really the ideal version of yourself. So it doesn't just develop organically. Obviously, it needs to be authentic and true to who you are. But, it, it, you know, an analogy that I use is when we're all posting pictures on Facebook, for example, um, we are managing our personal brands. You know, chances are you're not posting a picture when you first wake up in the morning. <laughs> you know, when you're... When you're yeah, yeah you know, grumpy or not, or not looking your best, you're, you're posting pictures about things that you're excited about, your achievements, your family, work things. So we are already managing our personal brands. And in the job market, uh, really paying attention to your personal brand, nurturing it uh, can really be, be very helpful and can, can actually have economic uh, you know, positive economic consequences, either in getting raises and promotions or commanding a better salary or getting funding if you're trying to, um, you know, create your own business. So it's really important. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, and that's, uh, uh, it's definitely really important. And it's also good what you say, right? It is, you are, you're definitely a, a brand, right? Yourself, you, you are the brand <laughs> of yourself. So I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's um, okay. Thank you. Um, before we go ahead, because so with this in, in mind, uh, uh, like what is personal brand and, and with the explanation that Julie just gave, um, we are interested, in, and I promise this is the last poll, but we are just interested to hear from, um, uh, from our uh, listeners what, what, um, uh, what are you looking for? So what are the relevant benefits to you personally of a stronger personal brand? And you can uh, um, put as many options in as you think. So the, any of the options that are uh, relevant for you, you can, you can, um, you can click on. So it's not just one. Um, I can imagine that there will be more relevant uh, answers than, uh, than one. Um, because there, I mean, yeah, with what we just heard, the listeners are, uh, a majority of the listeners are actually, uh, entrepreneurs. And, um, I think with entrepreneurs, it's, it's a, and we know that also when we prepared for this webinar, right, Julie, we see that 
uh, entrepreneurs are um, are more familiar, so to say, with 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 uh, the fact that they need a personal brand and that they need to have a good personal brand. Um, but we also find it very interesting to hear, like uh, for professionals who are currently in the workforce or not in the workforce yet, but really maybe not looking for uh, setting up their own business. How uh, how relevant a personal brand is. So let's see um, what comes out. Okay, so you see the, the results, uh, Julie? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So it looks like uh, a lot of these, the majority of these uh, got more than one, one click. Yeah. Uh, it looks like the standing out and being um, remembered and using my personal brand to boost my professional brand seem to have gotten the most. And I think that's, I think that's normal. I mean, it's, it's really hard these days, um, no matter what sector you're in, to break through. You know, the, yep. good, the good news, I think, about uh, online job searches, for example, and all the tools we have is that it's easier to apply for lots of different jobs and to, you know, you meet somebody and you connect with them on LinkedIn. But how do you get a response? You know, how do you get somebody to, to remember you and want to take an interest? I think that's really important. I think a strong personal brand can really help you there. Yeah. Yeah, and I find it interesting also this professional credibility, right? I think that is something and maybe, um, uh, maybe even women are struggling with that more than men, but it's really, you know, you know what you can do, right? You know your strengths, uh, but it's really important to be able to to um to come across with that credibility that you have and uh i think that is all about how do you how do you present your personal brand yeah i, do, I definitely think it's more of a female issue uh, yeah. yeah okay um so if we go to the next question um uh well i let you talk about this picture i think it's a lovely picture <laughs> um but i think the question that belongs to this slide is how do you start the process of identifying your personal brand so how do you how do, where do you start yeah so i think looking back at what first got us interested in the careers that we're pursuing is a great place to start um, because when we're children, we, you know, we haven't yet been beaten up by the world and we just have a lot of passion, a lot of natural interest. And when people ask me, how did I get my start in branding? I often say, well, it, you know, it began when I was eight. Uh, you know, here I am. Uh, I grew up in um, Massachusetts, um, had a very, very happy childhood. Uh, one major thing was missing, uh, which is that I, I desperately wanted a pet. And um, I have an older brother. There's just the two of us, but he is really allergic oh, yeah. to any kind of pet dander. And these were the days before designer pets. So um, my <laughs> you know, really unreasonably, I thought, said no. So being eight, uh, and I'm sure many of the people joining the webinar have children, um, I didn't take no for an answer. I, I went into my garden. I took a rock. I put that rock in a Cool Whip container. I put <laughs> holes in the top of the Cool Whip container so the rock could breathe. <laughs> and I came back to my parents and I said, um, you know, I, I, I have the pet rock. I'm going to have a pet rock. And, and my parents thought that I was kind of crazy. This was um, 1974. And uh, two years later, uh, Gary Dahl uh, in San Francisco, a copywriter, was sitting at a bar with a bunch of his friends who all had to leave the bar to go walk their cats and feed their dogs. And he actually is, created the pet rock and he made, you know, millions of dollars. Oh. Um, you know, he, he stole my idea. Um, so, of course. <laughs> right. So, you know, I'm eight in Massachusetts. He's 30 something in California. You know, he had the wherewithal to, to actually brand it and market it. He worked in advertising, but, that was the moment uh, when, I, when I created that pet rock where I started to use my creativity and my problem solving skills to, um, to attack problems, to solve problems from a different uh, point of view. And I've been doing that, uh, I don't even want to tell you how many years, but many, many years uh, since then. So 
when I speak in front of people and I talk about twisting and creativity, I often tell this story and, and people remember it and they come up to me afterwards and they tell me their own stories about what they created and the moment they knew yeah. they wanted to be. And it's just a much more engaging way than starting my story by saying, you know, I went to a certain university and I had, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it, it's more human and it's true and it links to what I'm known for today. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you, how would you link that to, uh, to what you're known for today? So I, I mean, just to, to make it very tangible, right? So, so this is a great story, by the way, I love the story. And how do you use that then in your personal brand? Like how, how do you use that to make the click towards, okay, now, I have bread school by Brand Twist, and and uh, um, uh, yeah, sort sort of like that. You still think out out outside the box, or how how do you how would you? Yeah, well, I, th I think you know, a branding is basically problem solving, right? Yeah, we create new products and services, and we brand them and we market them because we're filling a need. And so, from a very early age, I was interested in in solving problems and filling a need. But also from a very early age, I approached it with a twist. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't know to a cat and dog. I didn't say, well, can I have a hamster or a chicken or a snake? Or <laughs> no, no. It doesn't shed. I went completely outside of the animal world, yeah. uh, you know, to the mineral world and, you know, came at it from a different angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's great. Uh, and how, how would you... Um, why do you think this is very important for job seekers or someone who is restarting their career or who is looking for um, uh, uh, to 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 bring a sort of a twist in their uh, in their in their uh, uh, entrepreneurship? Why do you think it's important to have this personal brand? Because your personal story is something you can really own. It's different from everybody else's. So while you you know one of the things that I, I see people say all the time as well, you know, they'll say, tell me about yourself. Well, I have 30 years experience. Well, anybody who's in their fifties has 30 years experience. Yeah. So yeah. In a way that doesn't, that does not set you apart. Um, and people like, you know, people hire people, right? Yeah. They, they yeah. like authenticity. They like to hear stories. Um, and I'm sure everybody listening also has a story that they can tell with passion, with authenticity, you sort of light up. And if you can't, if you're having trouble identifying what your story is, one of the things we do in brand school is we buddy you up with somebody and you know, ask that person to, to interview you, to tell, you know, what, what, what did you want to be when you grow up, when you were growing up? When, when was the moment you decided to, um, to pursue this career path? Maybe many of us, um, also had moments where we tried something else and that something else we realized that we didn't love, even if we'd studied for it for years or we were trying to solve a problem or, or like you, you know, I have the same experience living in different countries. Yeah. You know, what was it like to, to start over again in a different country? You know, those are the things where people really get to know you. And as long as you edit the story, you know, don't tell every twist and turn in your life but edit it it's a memoir yeah. you know it's not a biography your personal brand is a memoir not a biography then i think you can help people get you right away and get interested in you and see how you're different than other candidates yeah yeah that's i think uh yeah so also what we tell our our community as well is that that um um, uh, people like HR people, they meet so many uh, interviewees, right? They, they have so many interviews on a day and it's just great if you can, if you can stand out with your, with your personal uh, story, which is your personal brand in the end, right? I think that's... Um... So to get to the next slide, I think that's also um, uh, a great way to, to explain. So you, you also always say that you should... You, you mentioned it also in your book. You say you should twist with people you admire. Um, first of all, how do you take lessons from those people and, and twist it to you to, to strengthen your own personal brand? Yeah, so here's an example. I don't know if everybody knows this, but this is Beyonce, who is such a fabulous performer, and I'm a big fan of hers. But I, 
I read somewhere that she was actually very shy, uh, which doesn't surprise me because I've, I've off, you know, with my work at Virgin, I've, I've met and worked with a lot of pretty famous people and often they are quite shy on a personal level. And so um, what Beyonce does is she creates a character called Sasha Fierce and that allows her to put on this persona uh, and perform at the Super Bowl and other things, you know, not as herself, but as Sasha Fierce. And it, it started to make me think, well, what are the instances, for example, in my own business life where I need a persona to do something better? And when I left the corporate world and started my own company about seven years ago, one of the things I really had difficulty with was negotiation. You know, I, I, I never had to really do that before. I always worked at companies where they had business development people. And so I created this persona uh, of, you know, my, my CFO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Negotiating <laughs> on the phone with a client uh, for new business. And I had no idea what to charge in the beginning. No. Rather than undersell, I would say, well, you know, let me, uh, I, I'd really like to work with you on this. I need to check with my CFO. And then, you know, <laughs> basically my CFO was me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would, you know, get a little schizophrenic, talk to myself and then, you know, come back. And so just being aware of the stories of people and oftentimes the easiest stories to read are stories about famous people because we're all, you know, obsessed with celebrity. And so yeah. you can go on and, and see an interview or on YouTube or, you know, in a magazine. And when you read something about somebody that you admire and you hear what's, what's different about them, one of their um, strategies, then you can twist it with your own strategy. You know, and so one of the things that I would say to everybody is what, what could an avatar help you do that maybe you're, you need more confidence, whether it's negotiation or presentation or, you know, client management uh, or interviewing and almost walk into that room. Maybe you give yourself a little different name. You know, now I'm going to put on my Sasha Fierce face uh, yeah. and that's going to help you, help you through it. Nobody needs to know but you, but it's just a little... You know, it's a little tool. It's a little yeah, exactly. Tool yeah, to make you stronger. Yeah, and also will help you probably. And that that's what you what you mentioned, right? It's it's all about confidence. Or that's if it helps you to be more confident, uh, why not, right? Why why not use yeah, you that, that tool? Somebody yeah. like Beyonce needs that. You know, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It looks so easy and effortless, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I loved that she shared this. And, you know, in my own, when I was creating my own brand, another celebrity that I like to twist with is, is Rachel Ray, the chef. And um, not, not because I cook, I'm actually don't cook at all, I'm married to a Frenchman who thankfully is a very good cook. But I loved the way that, that Rachel Ray just made everything about everyday meals and very fun and casual. And she says things like, you know, the recipe calls for shallots, but if you don't have shallots, just use onions. And I said, well, I'm going to try to be the Rachel Ray of branding. You know, I'm yep. Gonna yep. Be very positive and accessible and something that people can get good at just by doing, doing it every day. And, you know, again, have not improved my cooking skills at all, but I think I've, I've built a brand that's very accessible by using, by twisting with somebody I admire, like a Rachel Ray. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And that's, so that's how you take the lesson because that's in the end, uh, the question that I had, but I, 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 I get the clue. So it's really, how do you take that lesson to use it to yourself? Right. It's really just take examples and, and see how that fits your, uh, your own story or your own feeling and your own confidence. Yeah. And, and how do you, how do you link that back? Because we also, we always advise people to, when they, especially career returnees, but also um, professionals who are currently in a job and, and, and trying to find like a next opportunity is to, to be selective and, and really think about like cultural fit. We, we had a, a webinar uh, also about cultural fit and we, we just believe that's very important also for the longer term to be happy at a, at a job. Um, how do you, how do you link that back to, to f define like what culture fits you? How does that link back to your personal brand? Well, I really believe that you have to be yourself wherever you are, or you're not going to be happy. And, and one of the things that we talk a lot about in brand school is, 
uh, really bringing your whole personality to work. Um, and I think, you know, we, we need to be in our best behavior at interviews for presenting a good version of ourselves. But I think by letting in these personal stories, by telling these personal details, it allows you to start to, to imagine, well, if I really show up at this job in this culture with who I really am, you know, how is that going to feel? And if it doesn't feel right on the interview or it doesn't feel right in the beginning, it's, it's not going to feel right in the long term. I mean, you really have to, you know, work with people who really want to work with you, not just the professional, but you, the human being. And I think it's better to find that out sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. So at the next slide, we see a very cool picture of you and Tyra Banks. Tell a little bit more about this. <laughs> What happened here? Yeah. So I was fortunate enough last year to be invited to Stanford University to the business school to teach a class with um, Tyra, who um, was teaching a class called Project U. Um, And it's all about personal branding and helping these graduate business students develop their own personal brands. And I'm actually going back again this May to teach another year with her. That's and um, she's amazing. I mean, I learned so much from her, actually. And one of the things that, you know, she's a really smart businesswoman, you know, in, in a, and a very successful businesswoman. And, you know, in addition to being, to being a beautiful, beautiful person. Um, yeah. And she really understands her brand. And it was interesting. I, if any of you are fans of Tyra, she has a very distinctive walk, for example, on the catwalk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She told the story of when she was starting out, um, everybody kept getting her confused with Naomi Campbell, which is oh, yeah. really ridiculous because other than the fact that they're both African-American, they really don't look alike. No. But You know, that's just our very myopic view. And so she started to um, really exaggerate her walk and realize that she was going to have to have a signature, you know, some signature elements of her personal brand um, in order to, to really stand out and, and get noticed. And so she's, she's somebody who's been very calculated about managing her own brand. And I think through her show, America's Next Top Model, actually helping other, other people, you know, embrace their brands as Good. well. Yeah. And all and sizes, which is nice to see. Yeah, great. And I see you there also in your, your purple, uh, purple jacket, right? Yes. Maybe nice for, for the listeners to know, at least that's how I got to know you, is, <laughs> is you always, every day, you wear, wear, wear something purple, right? Yeah, I do, because when I started my own company, I looked at all the other branding companies and the branding experts and, and saw what, what do they wear and what are the colors that are predominant in the category. And it was a lot of very um, corporate colors, you know, a lot of blue and gray. And I kind of taking a cue from Rachel Ray, actually, again, I said, well, I'm, I love purple. It's always been my favorite color. I'm going to bring my femininity and my whole self to my brand And so I decided to, to embody my brand. So you can see I always dress in, in these colors um, so that when I'm on stage or even just at a conference or even now, if you could see me, I've got my purple jacket and my purple scarf on. You know, I, I, it's sort of my armor. You know, I feel, I feel ready. I feel professional. I stand out. Yeah. Um, and I got another uh, kind of trick for you. It makes it so much easier to get dressed in the morning. You know, because it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, that's what Steve Jobs, you know, used to do. The black turtleneck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a lot of men adopt a uniform. I think uh, walking in, you know, with your, with your own colors uh, and, and wearing them proudly is also going to have people remember you. Yeah, yeah. No, great. I think, it's, uh, I think it's, it's wonderful. And it is, it, it is really... Yeah, again, something that people will remember you for, right? They will, they, yeah, they know, okay, that's, that's, that's you leave from brand school. <laughs> oh, that, I, I like that. Um, 
maybe on the on the next slide i um uh so we're talking about how to define your your personal brand right how, how do you how you how do you define it and i think personal passion can be a source of inspiration for that right um yeah so we you know we've talked so far about things in your childhood and your past uh, twisting with other people um you know the third thing that i that we talk a lot about in brand school is twist with, with something you're passionate about. So here's an example of, um, of a woman, Joan, who's a kitchen designer. And uh, Joan is passionate about ballroom dancing, but I didn't know this till I was working with her for, for months. And uh, we kind of hit a roadblock in some of the work that we were doing. So I changed the subject and I said, so what, tell me what you, what you did this weekend. She said, well, I'm, I'm an amateur ballroom dancer. And I said, well, why have you never talked about that before? She said, well, I don't think it really relates to kitchen design. But, you know, you, you guys don't know Joan, but if I told you she was an amateur kitchen design, a ballroom dancer, you'd probably think she's fluid and, you know, graceful and good with spaces and all the things that make a good kitchen designer. So long story short, she rebranded to kitchen choreography. And now she okay. tells people about her passion and she makes it work and she makes it relevant to her business. And she's had a lot of success with this. That's cool. That's a, uh, uh, that, that's a very cool story. Yeah. I think that's, so it's really uh, start with, with looking at your, uh, at your even, yeah, more personal life and personal passions than just thinking about like, what did you do? What do you do professionally? And what's your background? What's your, uh, um, uh what's your uh, skill set or what's your uh how do you say it like uh, education right it's 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 actually much more about personal uh passions than than yeah that's how you can define your brand i think it's um it's i think it's great i think it is the um uh it's good and i think it's also the it's the time where people are more uh are more interested also in your personal life instead of having really that um distinction between personal and and career uh life so i think that's um yeah and and, um, and the distinction to make there is is not you don't want to tell them every detail and you don't want to yeah. tell them things that aren't relevant um but if you it's worth interrogating and seeing if there is something if there is some link you know and, and if you know anything about ballroom dancing, it, this is not something you just take on lightly as a hobby. I mean, it, it's so many hours of repetition. She's been doing it for years and she, she's gone to competitions and it's really a big part of her life, but it, it shows that she has discipline and dedication and an eye for, for movement and flow and things like that. And so she's been able to, to bring that over to her business. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, I think we're, uh, so I also want to, um, um, uh, at, at some point we will we need some volunteers and I know Antu is trying hard to, to get some volunteers in. I think we, we have some people who are at least sharing their story already. And I would like to ask to, to, for them also to, uh, to volunteer because I think they have great questions and I think, um, Julie would be, uh, amazing to talk to uh, uh about about some questions that they have and they may just be able to do that little exercise with you uh, later in the in the presentation um so uh, if we can go to the next slide um uh so we're coming back to to incorporating your brand into everyday life right we already talked about like the, the purple that you're wearing is there anything Thing more that you could give some tips and tricks on so as soon as you defined your personal brand how can you how can you incorporate that in in your daily life yeah i mean the way that you dress is a big part of it but even just um you know my brand is about the twist and so my business cards uh, actually have a twist motif in them um when i speak somewhere and i collect business cards i pass around this little purple uh, bucket, you know, which uh, what I want to say here is a lot of these things don't have to be very expensive. You know, they can just be a little, a little touch. And a lot of times we think, particularly as an entrepreneur, 
or a small business owner, well, I don't have huge marketing budgets. You don't have to have a huge marketing budget. You just have to be very purposeful with the elements that you do have. So this little bucket, I think I got in Party City for, you know, $2. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but go to a conference, we all collect business cards or I collect business cards from the, from the stage. I use this instead of just passing around a hat or a bucket or, you know, I don't know, a jar yeah. or, because it's got that little bit of, um, you know, of, of a twist to it and it reinforces my brand. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, I think uh, that we are there to uh, to start to do the exercise. I don't know, um, Anju, if we can, um, uh, Lon Lonaya, and sorry if I don't uh, pronounce your name right, uh, but if we can make, and so she volunteered, which is great. Thank you so much. Um, uh, so Lonaya, if, or Anju, if you can make her a panelist as well, so we can uh, um, let her speak. <laughs> So we have two volunteers, uh, Julie, and the first one is Lonaya again. Uh, Anju, let me know when she is um, live as a panelist. And if we can also go to the next slide. <clears throat> I think Lonaya is on now. Are you there? Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. How do you pronounce your name? Name? I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. <laughs> it's Lana. Okay. Hi. 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 So, um, Shelley, do you wanna do you wanna take over to? So, um, Lana, what um, what do you do? Um, I am currently a research associate at Fox Chase Cancer Center, and then I'm a graduate student at Temple University. Oh, great. So is there, so are you, um, are you looking for a job right now? Or are you, are you thinking about making change or? I am looking to start a small business, but first I would like to use my personal brand to just like market myself for um, other career opportunities. And then once I get my business started, maybe I can use it to like market. Well, my face and stuff will already be out there. So maybe I can use it to market whatever I decide to um, start my business <coughs> for like profit. Great. So are there any brands um, that you personally, not in research and not in medicine, but just um, that you are just passionate about? And, and a brand could be you know, like a brand like Starbucks or Nike, or it could be a person like Ira or Beyonce. Are there any brands that you're passionate about? Um, I am, well, I do follow Eric Thomas. He's a um, motivational speaker. I don't know if that would fit the criteria that you're asking about. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not that familiar with him, so it's hard for me. Is there a, another brand that you're a fan of? I'm trying to think of something that I use every day or eat a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, How about Amazon? Are you a fan of Amazon? Yes. I just looked over and I see Amazon. I just ordered two books. <laughs> okay. So Amazon is a great is a great brand to twist with, for example. Because, you know, if you look at Amazon, um, one of the things, I'm a huge fan of Amazon. I don't know how I ever survived before it. Um, but one of the things that I love about it is that it, you know, when you, when you buy something, it'll tell you people that bought this item bought this other thing, right? So it'll, it'll, give, you re it'll give you referrals and new ideas based on your buying habits. So for example, if that's something that's interesting to you as you're building your personal brand, you could incorporate that into the way that you're known so that you become known for somebody who's not just gonna solve the problem at hand, but every time I have a conversation with you, I'm gonna leave with my issue solved, but I'm also gonna get two new ideas or two new pieces of information. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's just starting to look at as you're building your brand so that you can 
you know, eventually start your own business, what do you want to become known for? Do you want to become known just as a great researcher, which is fantastic, but there are a lot of people out there with similar qualifications, or is there something more that you want to become known for? And looking outside your category to different brands can help you identify that twist. All right, I have a, a personal question. Starting mm -hmm. out, did you, when you first started personal branding, did you use any like social media or did you start off with like a web page? I started out with a blog. Uh, I actually started building my own personal brand while I was still at Virgin. Um, so I started out with um, my own, with a blog. I called, my blog was actually called Brand Twist before my company was. I created a logo for the blog on, um, I don't know, 99 Designs or one of those really, really inexpensive um, logo contest sites. And uh, I started in my current job when I was at Virgin uh, offering to, to speak on behalf of the company. Like if somebody couldn't afford Richard Branson, <laughs> who <laughs> gets a lot of money to speak, then I would say, you know, I'll, I'll come and do it. Um, and so I, um, you know, back then, um, blogging was the way to go. Now, uh, I think there are a lot of other, maybe even more interesting tools like Twitter and Instagram are a great way to become an authority and, and reach a lot of people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for volunteering. And, and we know it's, it can be a little bit <laughs> scary, but I think you did great. And, and hopefully this helps, uh, helps also uh, or answers your question. We know you yeah. had this question. Great. Thank you so much. And then we have another volunteer. Um, uh, and that is uh, Kathleen. Uh, so can we make her panelist as well, Anju? Then we can uh, do this little exercise with her as well. Hi, Kathleen, you're on. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi. Oh, great. I didn't realize there'd be video. It's a good thing I put the wine off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I have the fire going. Wait, here you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh. I'm really relaxing. It's a late uh, webinar. <laughs> very good. Very good. So, Julie. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have any specific personal branding questions or would you like to apply a twist? Uh, it's interesting because I've I've been thinking a lot about this, been doing a lot of um, networking, a lot of events, and I've been really looking forward to this webinar because your name had been mentioned to me a couple of times by people I've talked to. So um, I'm I'm doing a few events because I help run an organization called Woman Owned Greenwich, and so we're doing a lot of branding and personal branding events in the next three months. And we have some really interesting people coming to speak to us. So we wanted to have you at some point. So I, this is fun to hear you talk. Uh, I really need to work on my personal brand. I feel like I don't. And I was one of those people who voted for that 80% for the how to stand out more, how to grab people's attention. So that really interests me. I do have a good personal story, but I don't think I convey it well. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I talk about is the sort of blind date effect, um, which is, you know, we all have, because we're women and we live rich lives, we have a lot of things that we could talk about, but I think sometimes we, I think we tell too much of the story. Yes. The biggest challenge is to edit it down. Yes. Right? Shut up. <laughs> and, and the reason why I call it the blind date syndrome is, you know, back in the day, at least for me, I, I dated a lot and I would come home and I would say to myself why did I tell that story you know it was true I, I'm writing this down the yeah. tell too much and the blind date syndrome I love that so one things that we do in brand school is we we write down stories and we actually put a limit of 250 words um, which is really hard to get to but um it forces you to be very choiceful mm. and you know uh, what you want to do is kind of think about your audience but the really important thing is one is to edit but two is to make sure that your what you do mm. leave isn't just telling who you are but it's telling somebody who you are how you can help them mm. and why they should pay attention to you 
So you really need to focus on the listener of the story, edit the story, and then get very quickly. So when I tell my my pet rock story from the stage, what I'll say is, listen, I'm gonna I'm here today to help you find new solutions to old problems. Let me tell you a story about how I've been doing that since I was eight. And then I follow up right away with now let's talk about you know, how you can find your pet rock, how you can create you know, your thing. So editing it and really thinking about, is this telling a story about, how, so this person can imagine hiring me or coming to my networking event or investing in me, uh, what's in it for them? Yeah, I think that's a big missing piece when I'm networking with a lot of other women and you hear these great stories, but there's not the connection then between the, making that leap to the how then that serves the person that you're talking to, yeah. how that will benefit them. Yeah, and it's scary. It's really, uh, I think one of the worst things a lot of people you know, tell me that that moment, I went to a networking breakfast this morning for the Business Council of Westchester and we're gonna go around the room and introduce ourselves real quick. A lot of women that, that strikes fear in us, even, yeah. even, you know, even myself, and I, I do this for a living because it just puts you on the spot. So mm -hmm. the more that you've written it down, you've rehearsed it, you know, you've tried it on your, your hairdresser and your Uber driver, and you know, you've, you've practiced it out loud, yeah. um, you know, the, the better. The, uh, my husband joined a BNI just because he had this fear of kind of speaking in front of people a lot and it makes, it forces you every week to tell your kind of 30 second story and it has to have a little bit of a twist every week. Yeah. Um, but you do it enough and practice, like you said. I mean, I, I fully agree with that. Really helps a lot. I don't do that enough. You know, one of the things I do if you're in, if, you know, if in the car, I listen to the Moth Radio Hour all the time on NPR, uh. you know, or I listen to TED Talks and both of those are a really limited amount of times. You know, the TED Talks are 14 minutes. The Moth is yeah. like 20 minutes. And storytelling is an art. And one of the best ways to, you know, when you're a writer, people say you've got to read really good books to become a better writer. Yes. So if you want to tell a better story, just start tuning in to the storytelling of other people. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great tip. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. I think, I hope this, this answers your question. Uh, I no, it's fantastic. Because, thank I, you. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for being live. <laughs> we, couldn't <laughs> do this, uh, we couldn't do this twist, twist exercise, unfortunately, uh, but we need to go on. We only have actually eight minutes left, Julie. So thank you again, Kathleen. And um, I just wanted to uh, continue on with actually the last um, the last question that I have, and that also turns us into the question like, what now, right? So we all, this is all great information and great stories, great um, uh, examples. I mean, I've also, while we were talking, also thinking about like my own story, uh, being an expat, like you mentioned, uh, starting over in a new country, uh, starting my own business here. And um, sometimes you actually, it's good to reflect because sometimes you forget um, how um, uh, and, and look back at your accomplishments. And sometimes it's also good to be proud of something that you did, right? Instead of always looking forward. Um, but, but, I, but I think also for you, Anne Barbara, and I think this is a good example, what I like about that story is right away, it, it helps me understand why you're the right person, you and Anju at Vermillion, to help other women. Because some, a woman who is looking for a job, she is also a stranger in a strange new land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the workforce. So for you to be able to, it's not just that you have an interesting background because you're, you know, you're, you're from somewhere else. What that story says to me is you're somebody who understands what it's like not to understand what's happening or to feel like a stranger or to, yeah. you know, have issues translating things maybe technology has changed and you don't exactly exactly anymore. so that's why it's such a great anecdote because it makes it relevant for yeah. me yeah no exactly so yeah so well great so even you made me think to uh, <laughs> to rethink our story so thank you very much so yeah so how do we now action i think it's already on the slide uh, i don't know if you want to uh, um, uh, briefly um, uh, do this little call for action. <laughs> yeah, 
So one of, one of the things that we're doing now um, for the, you know, for the new year um, is we're offering um, a, a very concentrated uh, personal brand plan call, which is um, we ask you some questions like we're talking today, but much more, give you more time to think about them. Um, think about where your issues are with personal branding, who you might admire, why you really need a stronger personal brand. And then we have a 30 minute call with you and then we follow up with a, with a plan, you know, and it's interesting because for those of you who are in marketing or business, you would never just go out there and with a brand, a, you know, a commercial brand without a plan, but with ourselves, we think, well, it'll just happen. You know, my, my personal brand will just get stronger, but you know, as, as we've demonstrated, it needs some action. So um, if you're interested in, in finding out about this, you can go to brandtwist.com. Um, we normally uh, charge $150 for these, but we're, we're giving a, a discount for, uh, for people who've taken the time tonight to invest in this, in this webinar or who are listening to the recording. So if you put in VTwist as the code, and the V is for Vermillion, uh, if you put in VTwist as the code, it comes down to only $90, and it's a way that we could give you some some personal attention and we're doing that for the next couple of months. So you just, uh, if you want to use the, the code, make sure you, you book your, your call before the end of March. Um, and you know, if, if this is something you're thinking about, uh, we, we would love to, to help you with it. Um, Great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I think that's uh, so good for listeners to know. Um, and uh, uh, well, we, showed the information uh, on the slide so yeah you can just reach out directly to, to Julie and I'm, I'm sure you're in good hands when you talk to her so uh, <laughs> that will be will be fine I uh, wanted to go we have four minutes left so I wanted to do unfortunately we don't have much time to uh, answer uh, a lot of questions but we have one uh, that I wanted to ask you Julie is, is uh, how long does this process take to find the story um, like, what is your experience in 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 working with 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 professionals to find the personal brand? Like, what can it go can it go fast? I think from a timing perspective and from a yeah, I think it can go pretty fast as long as you have help. And um, the reason why I say that is because so many of us are so close to our own stories that we don't even see them. So the best thing to do, I mean. It, it, you know, even if, is to start to, to write down your story, start to tell them to somebody else, uh, ask each other uh, questions um, and tease it out of each other. Um, it, that will make it go a lot, lot faster than sitting in the room and going, hmm, I wonder what my personal brand's about. I got to think about the stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I think I see a, a question here. What would I recommend for people who have difficulty to claim successes? Um, I'm going to interpret from that question that maybe you, the difficulty is some people don't like to take credit. You know, they feel like it's um, self-congratulatory or they're boasting. And a lot of women have this problem. Uh, so what I say is shift the, the, what you're, what you're talking about, not to what you've done, but to the people that you've helped. Yeah. So if you had the, you know, cure for cancer, you would shout it from the rooftops. Right. And I hear a lot of women say, well, I don't want to sound too boastful, but don't make it about you. You know, what you can say is, you know, instead of me saying, well, I have all this, you know, success as, as branding expert, you know, what I would say is I, I'm, I'm very grateful to, been able to help a lot of people achieve their success with their brands. And as soon as I start to make it about the people that I've served, that I've helped, I feel a lot more comfortable and, uh, you know, talking about results and, and communicating my passion for it. So that's, that's what I would try. Yeah. Thank you. I think, uh, to be honest, I don't think we have time for more, more, more questions. Um, what we will do, we I think we have a couple more questions that came in. But what we will do, we will uh, after this webinar, we will send them to Shelley and we will make sure that uh, they get answered via email. Is that okay? Yes, I'd be happy, as well. happy to answer them. Uh, you know, Julia Brand Twist or on Twitter at Jay Cotton. 
Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, to find me. I'm very passionate about this and I, I love helping in particular, uh, love helping women. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Julie, for uh, joining us tonight. Um, we, um, well, and, that, and that, that's, I think, why we uh, link so good and why uh, when we met that we knew, okay, we need to do, we need to collaborate on this story because same thing for us. We, our mission is actually to help women uh, get to that next opportunity. And, and I, on purpose, uh, mentioned professionals overall because we see now also more men re-entering the workforce, which is great. And I think it, it makes it, a good mix um, but we all started with with empowering women uh, and that is just also because it's our own uh, experience so we can talk to that uh, in a much easier way because we we experience um, this re-entering the workforce ourselves so our call for action is really to to catch up with you so any any person who is listening tonight we would love to have a chat and help you along the way to find that next opportunity to find to put your personal game plan together for that next chapter in your career um so reach out to us if you uh, are ready for that next step after this webinar so this webinar is was really focused on personal brands which we think is a very important piece of the puzzle uh, to come uh, in the end uh, to find that right opportunity uh, in the next chapter of your career, uh, but there are more pieces to the puzzle uh, to make it complete. And we can help you to put that puzzle together um, and, and uh, putting together this personal game plan. So again, uh, please reach out to us uh, if you are ready. And um, uh, thank you very, very much for listening in tonight. And uh, Julie, again, also thank you very much for, your, um, for all your tips and tricks. And my pleasure. And I have to say, I love the Vermilion brand. I love the color. I love mm -hmm. the message. I love the V. It's, you know, it's, if I weren't purple, it would be my next. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only need to start wearing red every day. Yeah, That's what, yeah. Do, do, yeah. So we're going to work on that. We'll work on that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much and have a great night All for right, everybody. everybody. Thanks. Thank you.